now we have two signal spaces. Uh, I should write that down. This is the second signal space. So now that we have this, we want to go about talking about their performance. So this one is very, very def well defined. So we can talk directly about its performance. And for any kind of signal space uh, stuff, any, uh, any kind of uh, signal space, uh, when we talk about the bit error rate, uh, it is directly related to the minimum distance between any two constellations, uh, between any two signals in any constellation. So basically what that means is you're only as good as your, uh, your most likely error. So uh, errors are assumed on an additive white Gaussian noise channel to be, uh, to be Gaussianly distributed, um, centered at these points. So it's kind of like a two-dimensional Gaussian error distribution uh, for this case. And, but mainly what you can think of is it's Gaussian along this line. If you don't know what a Gaussian random variable or normal random variable is, we have another video on that that should be coming up soon. Um, it's a normal random variable here, and so the error is dependent upon a Q function. So for instance, if I ha so there's a very, very high probability that, is that if I send signal 5, it will end up here, but there's some probability that is normally distributed out along in every direction. So there is some probability that it'll end up in decision region 4, even if I did send signal 5. So we need to figure out what those probabilities are. But specifically, it is related to the distance between these two, these two signals in this constellation. And obviously, the smaller distance, the more likely that there's going to be an error. So we look at the worst case one, and in this case, the worst case is actually between, uh, it's a tie actually between, uh, uh, between decision region 5 and 3 and 5 and 4. So when we're looking at bit error rate comparisons, or BER comparisons, uh, we look at D min, the minimum distance between two. Uh, between two, any two signals in a constellation. So for the first set, d min is easily found by inspection to be the square root of 2 because uh, these are of length 2, length 2, length 2. This is 1 by 1, so the hypotenuse of that triangle is going to be square root 2. For the second one, this is a little bit more complicated. But specifically, we can relate the distance between these guys to the energy. So the d min for a PSK constellation is equal to 2 times the square root of the energy times the sine of pi divided by the number of singles, signals in the array. So here this is 5. So if you had a 9 PSK, this 5 would be a 9. Um, if you had 8 PSK, that 5 would be an 8. Um, problem is we don't know the energy here. And so we should look at the energy for these guys in terms of A, and for this one we can find the energy directly, before we continue on with bit error rate. So let's find energy. So the energy for the first one, energy in general is just going to be um, the distances for each one to the origin squared, and you add them all up for all the signals. So in this case, the distance to the origin here for uh, signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, and signal 4, so that's four of them. The distance to the origin is square root 2, so that number is squared plus this guy, which is just um, 1 times, uh, sorry, and then you need to divide here by the number of signals, which we've said is m. 
So we have that divided by 5 because we're basically taking an average here. Um, here we have 1 over 5, and we have a distance of 2 to the origin, and we need to square that. And if we find out what that is, we get 4 over 5 times 2, so that's 8 over 5. This becomes 4 over 5, so we end up with 12 over 5 volts squared per second, I believe. Volt squared per second as our energy. Is that the right energy? Yes. Okay. So that's the energy for the first one, E1. For the second one, for the PSK system, call that energy PSK. There is actually um, the formula for this, and it is that the um, it's the formula for um, the root, uh, root mean square of a sinusoid. Uh, so the root mean square of a sinusoid uh, gives you the power of a sinusoid. So related to the error. So we end up, let's raise the energy, not the error, I apologize. The power of a sinusoid is related to, so we have 1 half A squared. Um, that's the square of the average, uh, of the average root mean squared value of the sinusoid. And you multiply by the period of the sinusoid to get the energy because power times time is energy. And so this is the average power. These should be average bars. And so the average energy, I keep saying error. We're talking about energy now. I apologize. Anytime I've said error since talking about energy, I mean uh, energy. So the average energy for the first system we found by doing the sum of the distances and then we average them. So we divide by the number of them, uh, the sum of the distances squared. And now the energy for PSK we're finding by exploiting the power in a sinusoid is one half a t is one half a squared, and the t we multiply by because power times time is energy. And so here, we need to uh, we wouldn't need to know what a squared is, but we don't here. So we can um, we can find this later after we equalize the performance of the bit error rate. So what you do here is we have expressions here for d min, and we have expressions for the energy, and these are the things we want to compare. So at some point, we want to equalize one of these and then look at which one uh, has less energy or which one has the better d min. So what we do generally is we equalize the bit error rates because when you equalize the bit error rates, you're equalizing the performance of the system. Both will have the same uh, probability of error. So uh, we can take this energy here and plug it in up here and solve for an A that is going to make the d min the same here. So we're going to take uh, two seconds to just erase so I have some room, and then we'll recap, and we'll come back to solving for this. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming back. So we were talking about comparing the bit error rate to the energy. And what we decided we wanted to do was to equalize the bit error rates and then compare the energies to see which of these is the better signaling scheme. So we found, the, uh, we found that the bit error rate is related to the minimum distance between two constellations. So we found the minimum distance, and we know the minimum distance for a PSK system. Uh, unfortunately, the minimum distance for that PSK system is related to the energy. And the energy is related to the value A, which we do not know. So what we're going to do is we're going to equalize the performances here, and that will give us a value for A. And then once we have that performance equalized, we're going to plug that A back in here and find the difference in the energies. And whichever one has the lower energy for the same performance is more efficient. So we're going to say that we want the square root of 2, the d min for the first one, to equal to 2 times the square root of the energy for the PSK. So the square root of this is going to be 1 over square root 2, a square root t. And 
we also have to add on the sine of pi over 5 for the geometry of the constellation. So simplifying here, we have that we want the square root of 2 to equal to the square root of 2a square root of t. Well, if we wanted to find what t was, t is equal to 1 over the carrier frequency. And the carrier frequency was 1k hertz. So this is 0 0.001 seconds. So the square root of that uh, times the sine of pi over 5. Uh, so these can cancel as well. Sine of pi by 5. I apologize for the squeaky marker. I will switch this in a second to uh, make sure that you all don't go crazy. So we have 1 is equal to a times the square root of 0 0.001 sine of pi by 5. And so finally, if we want to find the a, that will end up making this our best case scenario. We have A is equal to 53.8, about, this is an about because I rounded, um, volts. So this is the A that matches the bit error rate performance for these two systems. So now that we have the bit error rate, so they're both performing at the same, uh, at the same efficiency here in terms of uh, making errors. So if uh, the first system makes an error in one in every thousand symbols, the second one will make an error in one every thousand symbols on average. So now that we have that, the one that uses the least energy is probably the one we want to use because it's the cheapest to use um, in terms of an energy budget. So uh, we're going to, we have the energy for the first one. It is 12 over 5 volt squared per second. And now that we have a value of A, we can plug into the energy for a PSK system and just directly compare them. So the energy for the PSK system, the average energy was equal to one half a t a squared t, where a is here and t is 0 0.01 seconds, 001 seconds. And so if we plug into this here, we end up with 1.447 volts squared per second, about. And so now we have the energy for the PSK system and the energy for our uh, random signal set that we created. And what we see here is that 12 over 5 is indeed greater than 1.447. So because these two signals, uh, these two signal spaces, these two signal sets have the same average energy rate, um, so our average error rate and the PSK system has lower energy, you choose the PSK system over our random signal set that we created at the beginning because it is more power to bit error rate efficient. So recapping 100% what we did, we had two signal sets. We wanted to determine which one was the best. So we plotted them both into signal space, drew the decision region so that we could visualize them. We have the first one up top here and the second one down here. Those decision regions were made by connecting each signal to its nearest neighbors and then bisecting those lines. Uh, so we have anything mapped into any one of these regions, omegas, will map to that signal uh, uh, in, the term, in the sense of uh, a received signal will map to those signals. And once we had that, we found expressions for the bit error rate, and we said that that was proportional to d min, uh, the minimum distance between any two signals in uh, the signal space. Here they were all the same, so we have this formula. Here, the signals between 5 and 4 and 5 and 3 had the, worst, uh, had the smallest d min. We equalized these by finding the energy uh, in a PSK system. Uh, and we found the amplitude for our PSK signal 
such that the bit error rates were asymptotically the same. And then once we finally had that, we found the energies for the two because they have the same error rate performance. Um, the one with the smaller energy for the same energy rate for the same error rate performance is the more efficient. So we found that the PSK system had less energy, so that one was the most power efficient and the one we would choose to use. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this was a good overview and have a good day, guys. I can talk forever.